What is going on beautiful people? Welcome back to another video and happy new year from me. We're back here at Route 1. Say happy new year, Danny. Happy new year, Danny. Happy new year, Danny. Every single video without fail, it's becoming a tradition. What I'm gonna do is, it is New Year's Day actually, I'm gonna get warmed up now as it is the evening and it is freezing cold outside and also in here. So I'm gonna get warmed up, I'm gonna do a cheeky upper body session today and in the middle, throughout the course of that upper body session, what I'm gonna do is discuss with you my insight and reflection on realistically, I believe there are only three true real flipping reasons why any of us work out and I'm gonna be taking a little bit of a deep dive into all of those three, but for now, I need to get warm. Uh, upper body, as I said, and just follow me. <laughs> Where are you going? Follow me, woman, follow me, come with me. Upper body session, guys, as I said, as I've mentioned a lot in probably the last kind of three, four videos, preference is absolutely key. And again, in terms of the, the main purpose of today's video, I believe that there are one or a multiple of three different reasons why people work out generally and I'll go over those in a minute. And I think primarily the first one that you get into when you first start working out, probably isn't a massive surprise to most people, is vanity. I think that a lot of people get, especially a lot of young guys, get into training, whether it's to get bigger or to stop being small, I kind of consider those slight nuances on kind of the same objective. But one thing I would say has kind of exploded in the fitness industry recently is a little bit of that particular objective kind of being demonized. And I don't really flip in like that. I think wanting to work out and especially messing around with kind of different training methodologies, five by five, like five, three, one, bit of powerlifting and functional bodybuilding stuff. I think to do that just purely for the benefit of improving the quality of your physique and your aesthetics is absolutely fine. It didn't really used to be my, it's actually probably more my objective now in my mid thirties than it was when I was kind of like most of my time in my twenties, which is much more performance focused. But I do believe that most people get into working out, that's kind of their, their gateway into it, probably isn't from a standpoint of anything else other than vanity. So today, upper body wise, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with some strength EMOMs, just warming up on incline bench now. And most of my horizontal pull work is done in kind of like an isometric hinge position. So that's basically kind of the posh scientific way of saying if I'm in like a bent over row, I'm holding my body in this position and I'm having to work by, shut up Siri. And I'm having to work to hold that hinge from there, whether that's single arm, whether it's double arm, whether it's whatever. But I'm actually going to do, if we just peek over to this bench now, I'm going to be doing some chest supported rows. Obviously, everything works slightly differently in this position by the fact that I'm not, by the fact that I'm not having to hold that hinge position. But you do get other benefits, such as pretty much everything extended beyond the shoulder joint, as in obviously down the, everything in the arms and the back are working, but everything pretty much beyond the shoulder joint is completely deactivated. So you dig your toes in, you make sure it's nice and stable, and then you keep the same amount of pressure from the chest, from the stomach and the hips on the bench throughout, as well as putting straight up, you're kind of putting back a tiny little bit. So instead of taking your thumbs up towards your ribs, because you're not completely parallel to the ground, from here, you're putting it back a little, maybe not too completely just to your hips, but somewhere between your hips and your ribs. So it's not just straight up here, which involves the traps kind of kicking in and shrugging up, but to kind of the midpoint there. And what I would say, a good little upper body hack that I've enjoyed over the last couple of months, or probably more than that actually, is whenever I'm doing any kind of push-pull superset work, which is very often in my upper body work, I actually like to do the pull work first as the first movement. And even though it's not the prime mover, it's not, it doesn't really have as much focus as push work, I wouldn't say to be honest, and it doesn't kind of require as much. One of the things I would say is a benefit is the fact that if you do the pull work first, all your lats and everything at the back of your shoulder girdle is so primed, it kind of pulls everything into position, which in my experience has actually made my push work feel more stable and therefore potentially allows me to kind of lift even heavier. That is kilos, not pounds, just so you know. Thank you very much. Welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> so with that, with what I just alluded to, again, I think a lot of people shit on vanity as an objective. 
And I think a lot of people, I don't know if they actually intrinsically truly judge people who uh, assign vanity as either all or kind of a component of their like objective. I don't know, but I think it's just become trendy, probably in kind of the CrossFit and functional fitness world a little bit. Again, a world that I'm not really involved in, but I am a fan of for certain kind of principles. I think it's become quite trendy in the CrossFit functional fitness world to bitch on people who train purely for aesthetics. Maybe in the more kind of conventional bodybuilding world where people are potentially not living an amazingly healthy life, extraordinarily strict, maybe increasing the risk of a hell of a lot of kind of like metabolic diseases and different things and putting their health at risk in different ways. Maybe I kind of understand uh, either a judgment or an observation for that, but for people who generally just like to improve the quality of their physique, I don't think it's fair to say that that is a bad object. Again, it wasn't really my main objective, but I think it is, it's always been part of it. And I think for anyone who says that that isn't part of any of their objective at all, as in their physique and the way their body looks is not remotely part of why they're doing it. I kind of think that's bullshit. And I think a lot of people lie about it. I think, oh, it's purely performance or it's purely, purely X, Y, Z, probably kind of more performance focused. And I don't know, I think claiming that you don't care about the way that your body looks at all for someone that trains four, five, six times a week is just a flipping lie. Yeah, I just thought I'd kind of share that recent insight that is realistically always at least a slice of the pie of why most people do the kind of stuff that we do in the gym. So strength theme on now, incline bench press. We've got 90 kilos on the bar. I'm gonna do six reps. Putting up one hand, that's six. Six reps, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna do 10 for the chest supported row. Uh, I would have liked to have gone a little bit heavier, but the 34 kilo, I had to check then, 34 kilo dumbbells are the heaviest ones that we've got upstairs, and I'm feeling I don't want to disrupt the flow of the gym, slash mainly lazy, so I'm not gonna go downstairs and pick up some heavier ones. So six reps on incline bench, 10 reps on the row. Actually, I'm starting on the row, so on the odd minutes, I'll be on the row. On the even minutes, I'll be on the incline bench. So I will do this for 10 minutes, so five rounds of each. Let's see how we get on. Section one of the session done, strength the moms. I went up, as you saw, from 90 to 95 in the incline bench. And I went from kind of 10 reps to 12 or 15 on the row. But it felt pretty good, actually, I have to say. The bench got pretty heavy, so the last two rounds, I broke it into a five and one. And that was flipping spicy. But it's good, it's good to be pushed. And again, the amount of total load that you can move in a strength emon because it is a little bit more metabolic and the rest really is cut down. I said it once, I said it a million times. The total amount of load is a little bit lower, but realistically, it's nowhere near as submaximal as you think. You're not dropping that much weight. You might be if you're only if you're powerlifting at the moment, and then you get into strength emon work because your body won't be used to recovering that quick. But if you do this stuff twice a week, once for upper body, once for lower body, so you can do push pull for upper body and then anterior based and posterior chain based. Uh, for lower body, if you do that once a week each for four weeks for a month, your body's ability to recover is so flipping quick, you're only dropping a couple of percent on the amount of load that you could be moving. So that is round one. Give me a second, have some amino acids, and I'll be right back with you. Section one done, and I have absolutely no qualms with saying that vanity is definitely a big part of my kind of purpose at the moment. I enjoy functional bodybuilding. I definitely enjoy it for more than just my aesthetics. I enjoy the kind of the slightly metabolic bodybuilding, which is a term I think I actually first saw on, uh, on Ollie Marchand's page, and it is is bodybuilding exercises kind of con with slightly condensed rest. It very kind of similar to the strength EMOM and there are loads of different methodologies and modalities you could use for that. But shrink the rest, so it's a little bit more aerobic and metabolic as well. So you get the added benefit of kind of staying lean in there as well. A little bit of kind of like natural fat loss and a bit of a cardiovascular result by the virtue of the fact that the rest is that much shorter. It's slightly gassy. So you're a tiny bit out of breath pretty much the whole time. That does perfectly segue into the second purpose that a hell of a lot of people train and that is health. This is something 
something that especially for young guys, unless you're mature and wise beyond your years, I don't believe that that many young men are looking at training through the lens of flipping longevity if they're only 17 or 22 or whatever. But if your age begins with a three or higher, it will probably end up slightly higher on your list of priorities. We all know that staying healthy is not only important to make sure that we live a little bit longer, but it is absolutely flipping crucial to make sure that our time on this planet is a little bit more enjoyable. Our brain works better when we're healthy. We just feel a little bit more mobile when we're healthy. We're able to walk upstairs without sweating and being out of breath and having aches and pains in our legs. And internally and behind the scenes, we're much more likely to prevent and avoid things like metabolic diseases. Chronic inflammation is linked to pretty much every flipping negative health condition you can have. And exercise obviously keeps that a little bit at bay. Excess body fat, especially visceral fat, fat around the organs. So again, being healthy is a prerequisite to living longer, but it is also a prerequisite to making sure that we are able to access joy from the life that we're living month on month and year on year. So we know we need to be healthy for that. So being healthy is a prerequisite for those benefits and regular exercise is a prerequisite for health. And I've no shame in saying that my aesthetics and my physique is a big priority for me. Obviously, I think it is for everyone that trains. It's a nice benefit. But knowing that I'm doing the flipping right thing for my body in the long term, living a hell of a lot longer and improving every area of the quality of my life during those years, is very much up there as well, making health and vanity on par with each other at this stage of my life. Moving on to section two then, I have done a horizontal push and pull, superset in the form of incline bench and chest supported row. Now I'm gonna move on to something different and do some overhead press and some pull up, some vertical push and pull in a little bit of a superset now. I do a hell of a lot of 10 to ones and I usually have horizontal push and pull as my primary movements and then vertical push and pull as my secondary, which means considering I go down in rep scheme as the session goes on, that's to say that I would normally do a heavier bench and row and then a little bit lighter with some overhead and some pull ups. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna keep the rep ranges the same and once again, I'm gonna do exactly the same flipping thing and I'm gonna do some strength EMOMs. I very rarely do this twice in one session, but being creative and playful. I'm gonna see how I get on with this. So I'm gonna do five reps on overhead and five weighted pull-ups. Again, 10 minutes, five working sets of each. That is 10 working strength sets. In just 10 minutes, that is one of the massive benefits, especially if you're training and you're on a little bit of a tight time schedule. I believe that having a flipping 3% decrease in total kind of training effect and the adaptation that you're driving home for the benefit of being able to do all that work in half the time is definitely a trade-off that I'm willing to make. So overhead press and weighted pull-ups, let's get cracking. Spicy, spicy, that was weird. That was weird, that was flipping cheeky, man. Like, I should said to Danny halfway through. This is harder than the bench and row, actually. And it definitely did feel like that. Another 10 to one, it's the second time I've done that volume with that, like that kind of thing, a strength EMOM. Strength EMOM superset, obviously, decent amount of volume, very low rest. Only 65 on the overhead press. I think I would have been able to go to maybe 70, 72 and a half for five sets of five strict with that low rest, but having come basically straight off the back of the bench, and that was it, some amino acids. And then I will share with you the third and final reason why any of us put ourselves through this flipping pain and anguish. Right, so amino acids in my belly, and that makes me feel good, especially 
with my piece of nicotine gum that I had during the first set. So on to the third and final reason that I believe that I personally, subjectively, phenomenologically assess pretty much everyone to work out. And this is a sponsoring kind of objective for a lot of people. We've had vanity, we've had health. And the third one is, I believe, sanity. The modern Western world has an extraordinary unending volume of flipping inputs into your brain. And I genuinely believe that speaking in generalities, we've miscalculated the volume of input that we can have and still thrive and be optimal as people. We can survive it. We can survive life in the modern Western world, but to truly thrive in it, I believe that finding a way to either guard your inputs in terms of both quality and just total volume of them, in terms of not watching the news as much, avoiding negative people, but also in terms of just general volume, that's a great way to kind of safeguard and insulate your mental health as much as possible as is finding something to just park your mind for an hour or two and just deep dive into something that is super mindful that doesn't really allow you to be too distracted or access your phone or any of these other devices or any other comparatively unrelenting input. Right guys, they are the three reasons that I believe most people train. Health, sanity, and vanity. And also, please stay on the line for the third and final section of my upper body session today. Biceps, triceps, lat raises, and core. Just two rounds of about 20 on each. Let's get it done, shall we? And we are all done, ladies and gentlemen. That is the upper body session done, all three sections. Horizontal push pull, strength EMOM to start with. Flipping, I can barely speak, I'm so out of breath. And then vertical push and pull, uh, strength EMOM as the second section. And then just a little bit of a finisher of some accessory stuff, which biceps, triceps, lat raise, and some specific isolated core work is normally a good finisher for me. I mix up the rep ranges and I mix up the order. But two rolling rounds of 20 on each today was a good way to finish the session and also shared with you my completely, honestly, subjective opinion on why people train health, vanity, and sanity. And I do believe that as you go through life, which one of those three objectives is in the driving seat for your training probably will change, but it's completely okay. Surrender to it, don't push the river. There's gonna be a little bit of kind of vacillation between vanity, health, and sanity as you go through life. They're all gonna play a part all the time, but which one is the primary objective is subject to change, and that is okay. Guys, if you did enjoy this video, please do smash that like button. Genuinely, it only takes two seconds for you, but it's incredibly beneficial for a young, hopefully growing channel like mine. And if you have not yet done so, please do subscribe. We've got a hell of a lot of content coming up for military prep guys, hybrid athletes, how to combine functional bodybuilding and weightlifting with a little bit of cardio stuff to make sure that you've got a good engine, you're healthy, you're lean, but you're also strong, aesthetic, and flipping jacked AF. As always, beautiful people, stay strong, stay healthy, stay awesome, and I will see you all in the next video.